so I don't know. What's it been? Two, three months since I've seen you. It's been a minute. It's no. open virtual. When's the last time I saw it's you? It's been July. Do we had a, we had a, we had an event together? Yeah. What month is it? Is it was, it's August. Uh, okay, so it's three weeks. He's having, okay. he's having I'm G having, I'm having, I'm having G Daddy G withdrawal. The G Daddy <laughs> withdrawal. So so here's the thing. Tonight we got our first investor dinner. He, he finally he pushed me over the hump to do a, a little bit of syndication. I don't know where I'm going. I'm in Mayapec. Like I haven't been here in six years. I got to turn around right you now. You sure do, uh, bro. So we got we got our first investor dinner. Um, packed the house. It's going to be a full house. Um, Marco did a lot of great work here, and we're just going to tee it up. Talk a little bit about the story, and uh, and I think the, the the most important thing is this is probably the cleanest mom and pop that we've seen in. I would say 20, since 2014 with the biggest upside. So this has always been the, the challenge, right? Do you want to give this stuff away or do you just want to do it all in-house? It's finally got to the point where we're either going to do it or not. So you know, we're going to open this up to folks. I think it's a great opportunity. And uh, I'm, I'm realistic about it. I think once this thing is repositioned, um, it's going to do over 300000 a year take home. And that's what, I was, that's what I was basically projecting beforehand today. So what are, what are your thoughts on it? Mr. G, what are you thinking here? Um, let me speak in simple terms. What Jake has been saying is um, repositioning is when we take this thing over and fix it up and bring it up to our standards, the mom and pop is, we're just at my restaurant, and that's a mom and pop. A small place run by people who are getting burned out, who don't want to be in the business anymore, and there's so much potential to that business that we see that we think that we can actually add a ton of value to the property. Um, it's a great property. We don't need to add a lot of money. It's just what we call a management play. Basically, it's not being run efficiently. There's a lot of inefficiencies in the business. And unfortunately, they're not running it like a business. And real estate, multifamily real estate in specific is a business. Let me tell Jake where he's going. Right over here, you're gonna make the right turn into here. So we are, I mean, I'm super excited. Do I wish we paid a little bit less? We always do, right? But you know what? In this market, this is where the prices are. Um, I always made the mistake of you got to take what the market is giving you, and this is what the market's giving us right now. So, hey, look at that. That's what I used to do. I used to deliver pizzas just like that guy. <laughs> that was me right there, guys. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong it, with it that. It was delicious. Nothing wrong with that. But the problem was I was stuck in fast nickels. Fast nickels, not slow dollars, right? Now I'm going fast dollars, right? That's where we've that's where we've gone to, and that's what syndication is going to allow us to do. So. Glad we're here. Get your popcorn ready. The G Dad's in the house. Yes. I just want to uh, thank everyone for coming. Uh, Eighty percent of the people here is uh, people I know forever, and sort of my brother. So I would put some money up, borrow from my dad, borrow from my brother, do whatever I had to do to invest in real estate and always be broke. And I actually bought, when I was 23, my first investment was a four family with my brother. And uh, I actually um, stopped and uh, was talking to Gino uh, at, the, uh, at the pizza store and telling him about this dilemma of mine, right? The, just, how, can I, uh, how can I stay involved and invested in these things? And uh, Gino uh, said, "Look, Mike, uh, we're I'm thinking about investing in uh, in Tennessee to meet uh, my colleague uh, Jake, and maybe uh, maybe we can do something together." I didn't call him a colleague; yeah. my drinking buddy. So. Drinking buddy. <laughs> right. so, so really, uh, you know, that's um, you know through that process uh, and and my uh, diversification, if you will, of um, of assets. I, I got I, I started thinking about that, and I and I said, "Look, I think he's right." And, uh, <laughs> Slowly, within uh, you know, within within one to two years after that, I sold my uh, my single family properties. Uh, uh, Jake, Gino, and I met up. Uh, we uh, we decided to uh, to invest in, um, in the multifamily, and uh, and we've uh, we've never looked back. thing is guys it's all about getting educated so if you're out you can give people money right you need to know what you're giving money to you need to know the investment so get educated multifamily before you give anybody money if you're gonna fix some flips spend money somebody just walked my fortune builders go out there invest in yourself that's the first thing you need to do before. And, and here's the thing guys we're 
we're obviously here talking about multifamily real estate tonight, but it's not general multifamily. You can do multifamily anywhere. We've been fortunate enough to discover a niche, and I really do believe there's a five to 10 year window, and the sun has started to set on this, because we're, we're gonna get into these mom and pops a little bit more. This is your opportunity, because if you wanna go with the A's, you wanna compete with the REITs, you want five caps, that's there for you, but we're talking about something different. We're gonna get into that in a minute. So we went our story. We bought the 25 million, we called the crack It was a rough property, but you know what? I saw $2,000 a month in cash flow. I saw the ability to refinance that property and roll that money out. So we had collectively put, I'm, I'm the numbers guy, he doesn't know numbers, I know numbers. $83,000 between the three of us. December of 2015, we were able to refinance that property, pull out $164,000. So you put in 83, you pull out 164, you raise the debt, obviously, but all of a sudden your income is up, so the income increasing takes care of the increased debt payments. So we got that money, what did we do? We didn't go on vacation. We repurposed that money into our next deal, and we've consequently done that to the tune of uh, $8.2 million. We refinanced $8.2 million. And that's tax-free money. And that's okay. tax-free money. And well, that's why I got my G-Deck here, right? To, to <laughs> which we do this stuff. But no, but you know, look, that's why it's the yin and yang. It's a good relationship. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to kick a door down and, and figure it out. Gino got educated, did the stuff that I probably wasn't willing to do at the time. So it's it's, it's, a, it's a you know dual effect there. But look, guys, you get into it for the yield. These other things happen. When you go in, you start turning these units. We're looking at the deal right now. Rents are around 500 a door. We know the market's at 800. We're not going to spend a ton of money to get it there, but it's going to get there. So you want to know what $300 a month per unit and these statements does over two years? It's ridiculous. And that's where the refined bulk comes in. How many of you guys are familiar with that? Equity through leverage. You're using the bank's money. You're going out there, you're putting debt on these things, and then you're able to refinance them. And you're taking that and you're putting it to your next deal. Tax advantages. Some of you guys may be familiar with cost segregation. Some of you may not. And we were just joking about a minute ago. Uh, I think it was Adam. And, and, and if you guys are armed, we have a great cost segregation guy. So if you have real estate and you want to know about some cost segregation, I can introduce you to somebody down in Tennessee. We're, we're just great. talking, we're just, no, we're literally just talking about, oh, you know, it's nice you get up here and get something's a write off, right? When you're in real estate the way that we're in real estate, everything's a write off. Okay, and that's not that's not like you know pushing it, trying to push stuff. We get so much uh, accelerated depreciation with our cost tag. It's it's unbelievable. You move to a state like Tennessee, you worry about state income tax. And he fails to he fails to say that he retired a year early because he was able to use his cost tag because of the cost tag a year early because he got all that money back from his job. So he's like, okay, fire me now. I want the severance package. And I did fire her at Taco Bell, and that's true. That really did happen. Chicken tasted the.